Do you want to improve at a quicker pace? Check out getgoodracing.com where I'm offering the most accessible coaching sessions on the market. Now for the track guide. Turn 1, heavy braking zone. I'm looking at a 50 meter board and I want to brake slightly before it. So around the 50 I'm applying the brakes and it's important to apex later here. So at this point you don't really see the apex, you just see the white concrete wall. But you're gonna apex almost in the middle of the part after you turn around the corner. So you certainly don't want to apex around here, what you see. So you want to break st firstly in a straight line, that's what I'm focusing. Whenever I'm applying the first initial pressure, I want my steering wheel to be straight, to maximize the efficiency. I saw that even if I have 3 degrees, 4 degrees, 5 degrees of uh, right steering angle, the tires are gonna feel like they're gonna snap. So you are gonna overheat the tires unnecessarily on entry, which will give you less grip mid-corner if you're gonna do that. So brake initially straight and then whenever you're doing this small drop in tire in uh, brake pressure then you're gonna um, turn the wheel more and more and as i told you i'm gonna apex almost in the middle of this wall if you take it just from the outside part so definitely a late apex around here the later you're gonna apex the better it's gonna be you can use this curb a little bit and also you can put more than what i did here with my tires on it and it still will be fine so it's an okay line to take um not sure which one is faster since the differences were in something like 002 001 003 so not a lot of differences however i think it's a bit more consistent if you don't go over this curve because usually if you go over this curve it means that you took a bit of an earlier apex and you will gain a bit of time initially under this part but whenever you will go wider here you will lose that time so definitely um, you can try to play around with that but using all the track on exit and now repositioning for the next corner because I want to use all this curb so mounting this curb and at the end of this curb I want to apply the brakes I braked a bit too much here so this is an over braking you shouldn't break that much if you see yourself that you break even more than 30 percent then that's an issue um, in this lap I braked a bit more but I was um, confidently braking half of this so around 15 percent and the car still had the proper speed so you see that I'm losing in the delta around here because I braked a bit too much but the moment that you're gonna have the car almost in the center of the track, you're gonna be back on throttle. So just around, um, just around this curb, you want to trail. And whenever you're going almost still on the curb, but you don't see it anymore, then you go back on throttle. You will get pushed more into the center. And now this is super, super important. You want to brake late here. What you can use as a brake reference? Not a lot of references here. So everything is happening quickly. You must find a brake marker that is not a visual sign. That's something that you can feel in the car. And what I found that works for me is that the moment that I straighten up the car, like right now, of course I'm turning a bit left while doing it, but there's a slight moment in which my steering wheel is straight after taking this corner. Around here, you see, it's almost straight. The moment that I straighten up my, my steering wheel is the moment that I'm applying the brakes because as in turn one, you want to do the same thing. You want to maximize the efficiency under straight line braking. You don't want to overheat the tires for this corner because I tried a lot of things and even in this attempt, this wasn't perfect by no means. But I found that if the tires are going to overheat just a bit on entry, for some reason, you won't have the same grip in the mid corner. So um it's easy to notice it if you try it a lot but braking efficiently braking with the wheel straight not adding too much brake pressure and i try to look at this point while braking i am looking at the white line around here this is my the only place where i look because i want to arrive closely to it but the moment that i'm releasing the brakes is like a leap of faith i go back on throttle so 
it's a bit difficult to explain because it's done more mostly on feel with this brake but after the brake I just want to push the car into this cambered corner I want to push it as much as I can in front of me and then immediately be back on throttle because the car will will handle it and it will feel like the car was gonna snap and it might feel a bit scary to to put the power down immediately but because of this elevation change and because there's a lot of grip um, on the upper part of the track that's exactly what you want to do so braking i'm looking at this white line i'm putting the power down immediately notice that i'm a bit overlapping the brake and the throttle so no gap in between inputs here since we have a big big straight and i take it just a bit of time to build up i think you can go a bit sooner on throttle but then jumping it to 100 percent and using all this track this is the maximum that you can use um even though the suspension is um, making like the car is bottoming out the car is not bottoming out right now so it depends on the setup of course but uh, i think you uh, this was not fixed so this was not fixed setup but i think you can try to use this much because if you're going to be able to use this much it means that you have been earlier on throttle and if your car doesn't bottom out then all good in my case it doesn't so i gain a lot of time here and you will carry this um, this speed all the way towards here because this is a big big straight since it's uh, with this car you don't need to brake um, what I do here though is I'm using this grass you see that this grass around here it's uh, already used I'm putting this tire on it because you won't take the off track and since I'm not braking on the grass um, the grass won't slow you down it won't make you spin so you really want to open this corner as much as possible because ideally you will want to have your left tires on this concrete and you will want to brake on the concrete if you're gonna use the white line and you will have your car more to the right to the point that it will be on the white line uh, you will carry less speed into this corner because the radius is not going to be as big as it could be. So braking just a tiny bit. I have a slight moment of oversteer right now, uh, which was not ideal. You should brake even less than what I did. So if you find yourself that you're braking more than, I don't know, 25%, brake less because you will overslow the car. Uh, I'm starting to get this car more and more. Um, still struggling to drive it um, as good as i want to but i found that in my telemetry i'm always breaking a bit more than the guys that are doing better better lap times than i do and i tried applying less and less brake pressure and i saw that the car can handle it so do this as a challenge in every corner in which you barely break or you feel that you barely break like 30 40 percent try to cut it in half because you will be surprised how well this car will handle if you're gonna brake less so just a bit of brake jumping back on throttle while doing the downshift to fifth gear and right now i want to cut this curb because i want to be in this kink right here i want to open up as much as possible the next corner so you have to do it a bit in advance so you'll have to do it from here because otherwise it's gonna be too late so from here you want to steer left at this point so that you will arrive here and now the moment that I'm at the kink I'm applying the brakes and I'm already back on throttle so going in almost instantly back on throttle after the little brake and it's important for you to be as close as you can to this orange sausage curb so that you will be able to put the power down and stay on throttle in this case i do a small small lift i was being afraid that uh, i will lose the car around here but all good you can use this part around here that's perfectly fine now the moment that i break here again it's difficult because you don't have a lot of brake references so it's done mostly on feel around here not a lot of references that you can use um on the old track version would we would had around the right side we would have had a panel that you can you could was, use but right now it's difficult it's quite difficult i'm trying to see now if we have a reference that we can use we have the 50 on the left but i don't like it since um, 
you're looking at the right on the apex so um, quite difficult to find the brake marker for here you will have to experiment with your feeling and try to see if you're gonna find something that works but going on brake trailing all the way to this corner and we have a lot of grip here because because of the mechanical grip of this track and of this corner here we have less grip so less grip less grip less grip and in this part there's a compression and we have more grip and we can put the power down but then again we go out of the compression and we have again less grip less grip so you have to modulate this with your throttle that's why i had to do this lift around here bringing the car back to the right side i'm looking at this uh exit road on the right side and as i'm trying to bring my car to this exit road but i'm braking slightly before it i think i can brake a bit later so definitely you can try to brake just a bit later than what i did i didn't have time to do so many laps to try everything but in my testing um this was a very comfortable braking zone so i think you can brake a bit later now in this corner i do a mistake here and i lose a bit of time because I'm quite scared that I'm gonna lose the car under throttle because right here you're gonna take a long long left hander while trailing and whenever you're trailing in the lower percentages there's a huge chance of spinning the car because uh, you will basically be on the edge of grip like right now trailing trailing still trailing and then I'm going back on throttle and it's in this transition from lower percentage trailing and overall a longer trail to being confident on throttle this is gonna make the car a bit of unstable but you want to avoid here what i did here so this is clearly a red flag whenever i'm maintaining throttle like this i should have gone a bit sooner to 100 percent throttle but because i ha i didn't have a good entry here so the apex was a bit early here i was afraid i would run out of track and i was afraid that i'm gonna spin so i had to back off um, you will want to, to follow this white line and whenever you're gonna feel the grip coming back to you That's gonna be a good sign to to stamp it because I feel it at this point Whenever I do this big jump, but it was already too late. So do it a bit earlier and it's gonna be fine Now moving on to another heavy braking zone similar to turn one I'm using the beginning of the curb as a reference for braking and I don't brake on this curb I don't like braking on it, I feel like there's some loose of grip and I'm trying to pick as hard as I can. I think even 100% will be possible and you will brake a bit later, but I'm braking as hard as I can while still maintaining tire temperatures in, in a window which I think it's, uh, it's good enough to take this corner because I tried to break to 100% and I felt like the grip was kind of missing. So definitely you can try it more to see what works for you and your setup. However, I found that breaking close to 90 was a bit better and then going as close as I can to this curb. Now, after this trailing, I'm going back on throttle around here. I'm giving just a blimp of throttle and then trailing again. And now again, I'm going back on throttle. This hesitation costed me two tenths around here. So definitely avoid it or maybe one tenth. Definitely avoid it. So whenever you go on throttle, stay on throttle. And for the last corner, I use this little dip in the track. So the track goes like this. You have a compression around here. Whenever I feel the suspension loaded, I'm applying the brakes and I'm turning at the same time because I know there's a lot of grip there. Uh, and then I'm trying to apex as late as I can. I use a bit this curb to hook up the car and then stamp the, the throttle using all the track on the exit. And in short, that's a track guide of Zandvoort, the new Zandvoort with uh, F4. I wish you a great week ahead and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.